Hey guys, it's Rebecca Brissett. In today's video, I'm doing something a little different and some of you guys may actually be shocked, but I'm gonna be coloring my hair. Uh, my hair is 100% virgin. It has been since I cut it for donation uh, two years ago, coming April um, 12th, so mm -hmm. next month. Um, but influencer sent me this to test out. This is the Schwarzkopf Simply Color. It's a 0% alcohol, silicone, and ammonia-based uh, hair color. It's something that you can buy at Walmart. And I thought it was interesting when I opened the lid, inside the lid, there's like this little card here that says, love your shade. Remember to pick it up at your next visit. And then it says uh, re recommended coloring every four to six weeks. So I thought that was neat. There's a little thing in here that you can like peel out of the lid and then write down what's what. They sent me intense espresso or espresso, which is a 4.0. My hair ranges between um, a 4.5 and a 5 for the color shade. Um, if those of you that are familiar with light to darkness, 10 being black, or I mean, one being black, 10 being blonde, 12 being platinum. Um, and brown starts between like seven and six, depending on whether you're dark blonde or light brown. Um, and I range between a four and a half and a five, but I'm also 40 and I've had gray hair since I was 25. I honestly don't care about my gray hair, but I know that there's a lot of women that are self-conscious and don't have the confidence to wear their gray hair. So what I figured I would do is I'm gonna be doing this how I would if I was in the salon, and that includes a bowl method, which I don't know where my special thing went. I have to go find that. Uh, I had it on the counter, but probably cat ran off with it. It's probably underneath the counter. Um, I'm going to section off part of my hair because I'm not doing the whole thing. I'm going to take a triangular section basically right here, and this is what I'm gonna work with. So I'm going to wrap my hair in the comb. Well, or not, because it just falls right out. And I'm going to pull all the rest of it back because I don't want hair color anywhere else on my hair because my hair needs to stay as virgin as possible for the next time I donate it. And because my hair is thick, I have to use a number of clips to get it to stay in place. Okay. So this is what I'm working with. What I'm going to do before I even mix color is I'm going to take a very lightweight conditioner and I'm going to apply this to the hair around the area so that I don't get color anywhere I don't want it. And this is just a biolage conditioner. I need to use it up anyways. And I will be washing my hair, so this isn't really gonna be doing anything. Hello? It whistled at me. It's not really gonna be doing a whole lot of anything in my hair. It's not made for my hair type anyways. It's made for very fine, thin hair and that is definitely not what I have. And when I used to do hair color in the salon, I used to prefer doing it on at least day old hair. So hair that has a little bit of like natural oils in it is what I preferred working with because you have a little bit um, more moisturization to the hair as it colors. So um, it, you, hair color can be very damaging to the hair no matter how you mix it, no matter what volume you use. Um, and I'm just gonna run what's left on my fingers through the ends because this is a permanent hair color, just so you know. Um, this is not a demi-permanent, which is deposit only. It's not semi-permanent, which only lasts like seven to 14 washes and it's not temporary. So this is technically a permanent hair color. Let me find my, um, my hair spatula and I will be right back. All right, I went ahead and changed my battery out too since I was flashing red and I didn't wanna have it dying on me. Now, um, let me move back a little bit so you can see the majority of my hair. This is what is called a brush in a bowl technique versus a bottle. I'm not gonna be using the actual bottle because I can guarantee you with as much hair as I have, this one little bottle isn't going to do anything at all to my hair. So um, in the salon industry, we have things like this. It's called a key. It's what we use to slide on to the hair color tube so that we get the most product out of it. I'm gonna be mixing equal parts, um, hopefully. And I have one of my matrix, yeah, it's a little matrix measuring cup. So I'm going to go ahead and put the developer in here first and then I will add the cream color to it as I need. I'm gonna start off with about a quarter of an ounce or half an ounce. Okay, we're at right about a half an ounce. I don't need more than a, an ounce of color anyways. And then depending on how long you keep your tubes open for, a tube like this can last you a couple of months as long as you make sure that the lid stays on and it's tight. Um, you don't want oxidation to get to the product. And if it does, just squeeze a little bit out of the tube 
and you don't have to worry about as much. Just show you guys what I'm doing. Try not to get it on the sides because it'll mess up your measurements. And the easiest way to do this is you put your liquid in first and then you add your cream colorant after. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stop there and then mix. And I'm just gonna use this instead of my double matrix bowl. I mean, why make even more mess? We also used to have cute little whisks that we used in the salon. I did not dig that out. I have a roll cape, uh, cage case. Yeah. I need more coffee. I have a roll case that I keep product in for like my salon days. So like my shampoo case, my neck strips, my razor, things like that are in there. Things that I don't use on the regular. Mm -hmm. We're almost at an ounce. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more color. There's this, this guy, I think his name is Jurgen. Jurgen. He is, I do believe, like Swedish or he's like from Norway or one of those countries. I believe he's Dutch. Um, he is a hair color or he's a hairstylist that has been in the salon industry almost as long as I have or as long as I have. And um, I've been watching a lot of his like compilation videos on YouTube lately and they're absolutely hilarious. Like he watched this one video and the girl's like pouring the one liquid and she's like, watching it go into the bottle of developer and I'm like, oh wow. It's like extreme hair fails, things like that. We're not going to do that today on my channel. I am a professional. I have been licensed in cosmetology since 1997. It actually smells nice. I'm surprised because hair color makes my eyes burn and I have no idea what volume developer this is at all but I have quite a bit of grays in this section. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and comb it out. Now, when I was, ignore the air sound, when I was back in the salon, um, we were doing what is called freehand before the whole balayage thing took over. That's basically where you use your hand to paint product on. And I have a mirror underneath the camera, so I'm gonna be using that. And because this is permanent hair color, section this off and I'm going to start about two inches away from the scalp. The reason for this is your scalp produces an awful lot of heat which is why they your parents used to always tell you when you went outside as a kid to cover your head. There's a reason for that. Uh oh. Decorate the floor already. Which is why I have black pants on. I, I was a flinger in the salon for anybody that's actually a hairdresser that um, knows anything about hair or the salon industry. I, I'm a flinger you'll understand what I mean. If you're not, it's just a hairdresser inside joke. And I'm saturating it all the way down to the ends. I'll come back to the um, rest of it here in just a minute. Kind of stick it on that conditioned side. I could have sectioned off a little bit more here. But again, I don't want, I don't want my hair colored, period. And I've made way too much color. But the reason you do not start at the scalp I got sidetracked. I, I can multitask, I promise. No, I can't. Um, it's because your heat, your scalp produces a lot of heat. So that means the color is going to process faster at your scalp than it would anywhere else. So you're gonna start mid shaft to end. Sometimes um, if you have like heat treated hair, which I do not, if you use a blow dryer or a curling iron, you would want to um, do the mid section of your hair, which is basically from here to like here, you leave out the last couple of inches of your hair uh, for your tips. But my hair is not heat treated. I do not color treat my hair. It's not chemically treated. I use a lot of oil in my hair to keep it moisturized because my hair is dry. I live in Florida where the humidity is awful. And you wanna make sure that your hair is fully saturated, which again, I knew that this bottle would definitely not be enough to do my hair with as thick as it is. Because most of these, it's, it's usually one ounce of developer and one ounce of, two ounces of product. What do we got in here? 
two ounces. So it, it should be equal ratio, so it should be a two ounce tube of color and a two ounce thing of developer. And then you sit like this, it says 30 minutes. Oh, look, I'm getting my eyebrow. That was not intentional. You don't want to put it directly on your roots first because the roots are going to be darker faster. They're going to process faster, so you want to stay away from the root area. Yeah, here, pull up there too. Again, I'm a flinger. So um, I'm not going to hold this the whole time. I probably could just take my glove off and leave it in the glove in my in my hair. Um, I'm just massaging the hair color through. You want to make sure that your hair is fully saturated so that it has evil even distribution because as this is a permanent hair color. It has to blow your cuticle wide open. So what that does is it takes your smooth hair shaft and blows it open so that the hair can go, the hair color can go directly into the mid shaft and core of your hair to deposit color. So what we're going to do is allow this to work for um, a few minutes and then I'm going to come back and apply this to the routage area and get all the way down to the scalp where there's a two inch gap that there is nothing. And because I have stuff in my glove, I'm just going to literally take my glove off around my hair. No need for a shampoo cap. And voila. Now I'm going to rinse this glove off so I don't get hair color or anything else. Um, for people that color your hair at home, something like this is okay if you have short hair. If you have hair that is this length or longer, get a bowl. This is a double-sided bowl. You can put color in both sides. This is what I used when I was doing uh, double foils or, or double color or tri-colored foils. Like if somebody wanted, um, you know, like their roots done, that would be one bowl. And then if they wanted like golden highlights and honey highlights, one's a little darker than the other, I would mix those in here and then just make sure that the brush that I'm using has a different colored handle so I can remember where the heck I was. And as I'm working through the, you know, fo foiling out sections of the hair, um, I would just, you know, switch back and forth to what color is what, and then um, work from there. So these double bowls are like amazing, but this is one from the brand Matrix. Um, I did work for a Matrix salon for a number of years. I've also worked with Farouk and Paul Mitchell and Redken and a whole bunch of them. Redken, if you have the cream colors that they have, they come in little bottles, little two ounce bottles. Those are actually easier applied in something like this than a bowl itself because of the way that the product solidifies. It comes from a liquid and a liquid and it turns into like this jelly consistency. So it comes out of a bottle so much easier. You can use a brush in a bowl for it, but for the most part, I would recommend using an actual bottle. And if you can, let's see if I can grab one. You can buy little bottles like this. This is a six ounce bottle that you can buy. I also have another one that's taller. It's a eight ounce bottle, but it holds 10 ounces of color and it's got an angled nozzle on it. This one has a very, very fine tip. If you notice that the tip is too fine for what you need, you can always snip it and cut it open a little bit more. So you have a little bit more to work with size wise. Um, so I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes, uh, wash my hands really quick, wash the glove, and I will be back um, to apply the root area with you guys and then I'll wash it out and show you what happens when it when it's done. So I'll see you in just a little bit. All right, it has been several minutes. Okay, hair's kicking back on. I'll tell you how long I've been gone. It takes about 15 minutes, but I have to kick off and kick back on. All right, so I'm getting this glove back on. I'm gonna unpin this one and get my hand back in it. I just got hair color on my knuckle. Now, I'm going to go around the border of the hair first, starting at the center part and working my way towards the other color. And then I'm going to flip it back and get all the hair at the scalp line in the front. And yes, my other hair is falling because the clip doesn't hold my hair very well because my hair is very heavy. And then we're going to come here and do this part as well. Now, if you're worried about transferring color, like if you're using color that's a lot different in shade from your natural hair color, you can pull your hair back even more or use more conditioner to um, 
protect the other hair so that hair color doesn't transfer. Also, when you go to rinse, you want to rinse this with your hair pinned back and covered so it's safe. And you want to rinse that separately. Thankfully, I have a removable shower head so I can do that. And then you just kind of paint it to meet it up. And then we're gonna go small sections at a time, usually half inch, quarter inch sections. And I use the tool to separate. You can use a comb. It just takes longer to put your tool down and pick up a comb, especially if you're in the salon, you don't have time for all that crap. You have to get it on and get it going. And then with whatever is left in here, I'm gonna go ahead and smear it on my hair. I'll have to zoom this in editing, editing so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing like up close. And if you notice, the color has also oxidized because it's, it's been sitting out for a few minutes. Hair color kind of has a tendency to do that, especially if you're working with a dark shade like this. Yeah, I made a little too much. But I'd rather have too much than not enough. And I did get a bullet over here. I'll get that off in just a second. This is just a heavy duty, like cotton round, basically, that I've gotten wet. And I'm going to kind of twist it. I'm trying not to get it on my forehead. I'm going to try and clip it in place. You don't want it too tight to the scalp because you want it to be able to breathe. Because again, it needs oxygen to develop most of the time. I see these people uh, that put like plastic bags and stuff on their heads and then they like shrink wrap them down. Don't do that. You need oxygen to get to this. So I'm going to. I'm not even going to touch the camera yet. I'm going to wash these gloves really quick, get the hair color blue off the floor. I have multiple spots of it. Again, I'm a flinger. And then I will see you guys in the, at the end after I've had a shower and washed all this stuff out. All right, so I figured I'd film this part out here. My hair is still kind of damp, but I wanted you to see it in direct sunlight. You can see where the hair color is in my hair, especially if I Grab a small piece, grab some behind it. If I hold my hair flat, you can see that the front part of it is darker. It also didn't cover the grays up by my scalp very well. But it is a little bit darker than my natural hair color. I'm like blind sitting here in the sun right now. But I figured I would show you what it looks like in direct sunlight next to, I mean, you can, I can see it on the viewfinder right here is where it's dyed. And then this is my natural color. So you can see there is quite a bit of a difference between what I did and you know, what my natural hair color is. My natural hair color also has more red in it than this does. And I can feel a texture difference in my hair. My hair is a lot more dry. But you can also see that it didn't cover the grays very well. And I don't know if it's supposed to cover gray. Look, there's one gray right there. Like, And it's definitely connected in that spot that I did um, color. So All right, guys, so I am back. Um, you can, I did some video outside, but there is a noticeable difference between my natural color and the strip that I did. And it did not cover gray at all. So if I pull part of that strip, not only is it noticeably darker than my natural hair, which is fine, but like the gray hairs, especially the ones at the root, did not cover at all. 
and the ones that are further through the mid shaft to the ends, it just kind of darkened them just a little bit. So I don't think this would be good for somebody if you're looking for gray coverage. I don't think it says anything on here. Okay, I'm wrong. It says natural color results up to 100% gray coverage. I'm gonna have to call them a bullshit on that because I can see in the mirror underneath the camera the gray, the gray hairs like going um, just in that small patch that I did. There, it doesn't, yeah, it didn't cover my grays at all. Uh, I do have very coarse hair, very thick hair, so that also could play into the fact that it didn't cover. And you would think that the hair that got more time with the color on it that was mid shaft to ends, it would be better covered, but it wasn't. Um, I also want to make sure that I say, um, if you're watching this, that when I say one-to-one -one ratios, I mean equal parts. So if this is, you know, the developer is two ounces, the tube is two ounces, and you take uh, one ounce out of each, mix them equally. Do not mix one and a half ounces of color and a half ounce of developer or a one ounce of developer because there's not going to be enough I mean, you'll get some coverage from it, but you're not going to get um, what you should get. What we used to do in the salon, depending on how um, hard grays were to cover, we could do one of two things. We could increase the volume of developer that we use instead of 20, we could up it to 30, or we could do like um, double 20 or double and a, you know, like one and a half. So if you are going to mix your ratios with hair color, again, doing it with a box, you're not gonna get um, the results that they recommend, but if you have a tube of color and a bottle of developer and you're trying to figure out how to mix color, take your tube, however many ounces are on that tube and you want a little bit more gray coverage and you get a 20 volume developer, start with two ounces of it, mix it up, and then add in another half an ounce to an ounce of 20 volume to kind of give it a little bit more strength behind the um, ability to deposit more color. What the volume developer does is it, it's a type of percentage of the hydrogen peroxide that goes into your, your hair. What it does is it breaks the hydrogen bonds in your hair, which you know you can do simply with water, but what it does is it allows the cuticle to be opened far enough, long enough, so that the color can get down inside the shaft of the hair. The hair is made up of multiple layers, and I'll stick a graphic here on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. But the more exposed the center of your hair is to the color molecule as it's implanting into the hair shaft itself, the more grab you're going to have because it's going to actually change the color matrix of your hair at its core. And then as you rinse the product out, your cuticle is going to slowly close over it, and then it's going to trap color molecules inside the center of your hair. So when I, when I say mixing equal parts, that's if you wanna just color your hair. I'm not talking about like lightening it. If you wanna lighten your hair, that's a whole different ball game. Um, if you are trying to remove color, always remove color first. Find a brand that has also got a color remover. Then that way you know you're gonna have a better chance of removing color. Also coloring over previously colored hair can also change the effects of what you're going for. I mean, you can look at a picture on a box all day long or like the color representations that they give you and they're not going to be accurate because if you already have chemically processed hair, your hair isn't virgin like mine is. So you're going to be starting with an unknown factor and then you're gonna be putting something on it that has more of a known factor. It's kind of like a science test um, where scientists start off with a theory and then they have to test that uh, and see if it's practically relevant at all. Uh, hair color science is a little bit like that. It's a theory at first and then we go on and we practice and we learn more until we can perfect that. Um, I was a master colorist in the salons that I've worked in. I've had a bunch of training in hair color techniques as well as hair color removal and color correction. So if you guys have questions about some of that, please let me know. I'm willing to walk you through it. I will pull graphics. Um, also keep in mind the color wheel because I have a lot of red naturally in my hair. You can see it. Um, anybody that knows anything about hair color period should be able to see the red naturally in my hair. And as I'm more exposed to the sun, since I live in Florida and it's like hotter than Hades outside right now and it's almost April, I'm gonna be more exposed to the sun, which the sun will naturally lighten my hair, which the more and more red will pull out of my hair because you'll see um, as the sun lightens my hair, more and more red will shine through. 
It's just because that's the base color of my hair. Some people have more like a greenish tinge to their brown hair, and that just means that you have a cool undertone versus a warm. I have a warm undertone to my skin as well. I have a warm undertone to my hair. The color wheel is something that we always like to follow when it comes to the salon. If you want to counteract green, you need red. If you want to counteract red, you need green. They're directly across from each other on the color wheel. You always want to go diagonal. Whichever you know way you're going, you always want to be pretty succinct with where it is on the color wheel. So if you're trying to get a color, a specific color, make sure that you're matching what's on the other side. So keep that in mind when coloring your hair. Also, boxes are made from like a, you know, a base set of like parameters for hair. They don't take into consideration heat, um, products that you use on your hair, uh, porosity, the, you know, whether or not it has previous damage, whether or not you heat treated or chemically treated, they don't know any of that stuff. So they formulate this to be kind of like a generic kind of catch-all kind of color thing. Um, I'm not unhappy with it. I can feel a difference in my hair texture, uh, both wet and dry since I put the color on it. I mean, it does feel quite a bit different. And so, and I use salon grade products in my, sh uh, my shower. So I know what I'm putting on my hair is something that I'm used to using and have been using for as long as I've been in the salon industry. So I'm familiar with the products that I put in my hair. So um, I'm just kind of just, you know, I wanted to see if it would color the grays. Um, it didn't. I'm not too disappointed with it. I'm happy with my sparkly little highlights that grow naturally. Um, I know some women are not. So that's that miniature review, first impressions of using this simply color. And there's quite a bit left. I mean, there's, I used an ounce of it. So um, there's like, because I used half an ounce of developer and um, half an ounce of the color to make an ounce. So I have an ounce and a half left. If I wanted to, I could put it on like my ends or something to kind of darken those if I wanted to do that. I don't. I want to keep my hair as close to natural as possible. So when I chop it all off in a little bit to donate it again when it is the length that I want to donate, because this is where I'm at right now lengthwise, um, I would love to just give them 100% virgin hair again. I gave them 20 plus inches last time of virgin hair and I plan to do that again this time. Now granted, um, this little piece here isn't going to matter a whole lot in the scheme of things because, I mean, it's it's a very small portion of my hair, like considering how much hair I have. So anyways, I'm Rebecca Brissett. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I no longer work behind a chair because of my health. I cannot stand that long anymore and I have problems with my hands. If I did work uh, behind a chair, I would love to only work like two or three hours a day. And most salons, even in booth rent, don't want that. So it is what it is. I uh, will see you guys later. Have a fantastic day or night wherever you are. Please don't forget to wash your hands and wear your face coverings. I'll see you guys later. Bye.